First up, let's talk about uh, mandatory jabs. Was it ever a moral stance from the government that uh, uh, we should uh, see the mandatory jabs imposed on not just care home workers, but NHS staff as well, even if they weren't even uh, ever dealing with patients, working in the back office, uh, as opposed to actually tending to them uh, on wards? Uh, well, we understand that today there will be that meeting of the COVID O committee that decides on COVID policy, where Sajid Javid, the health secretary, is expected to meet fellow ministers and actually rubber stamp a decision for a U-turn and to uh, no longer require all NHS staff and care workers to be jabbed on the 1st of April. A bit late for the care workers who've already lost their jobs in November, but I'm sure that move is welcomed by GP and medical writer Rene Honderkamp, who joins us right now. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Um, I hope you're well. I'm very well indeed. We're very cheered up by a policy that is uh, finally looking like it's got common sense I mean, it, it wrapped all over it. But has the government been... Has the, government, has the government gone to this policy because they've realised how wrong morally, scientifically, medically, practically their policy was? Or do you think they've been dragged kicking and screaming, screaming to this U-turn? So I feel, Julia, that um, firstly, I haven't seen it officially from the government yet, so I won't absolutely count my chickens until True. I see it. Um, I have always said, I think when we've spoken before, that I never believed that they would actually bring this in because they have always known that it would decimate the NHS. They wouldn't be able to cope with the staff shortages. And that's why they delayed it. They announced it in November and said it would come into force on April Fool's Day. So I would say that they always knew they wouldn't do it. It was yet another psychological nudge to try and make those people who had taken the decision not to vaccinate, to vaccinate. And now they're coming screaming and kicking at the last minute, looking like they've been forced there when they never intended now, to. I, see, I find it fascinating how many people actually, you know, the anti-lockdown folk like you, yourself, myself, who believe that you know vaccine passports were never going to happen, the mandatory jabs was never going to happen. They did bring in vaccine passports, um, you know, in, across the large parts of the, 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 the of Europe and the world, um, even in, in the UK, in Wales and, and Scotland. And we did see them for... Um, for nightclubs and some venues in, in England as well. Um, and we did see the vaccine mandate imposed and people losing their jobs, which will undoubtedly have cost lives of people who would otherwise had better care in care homes. So I don't understand why anyone thinks this wasn't true, but what they were hoping was that everyone would be bullied, um, threatened into getting the jab and then they wouldn't have to sack people, but they were willing to sack people. We know that because they did in November. Um, they just thought they could persuade everyone. I think Steve James, who we spoke to earlier, that NHS uh, anaesthetist uh, consultant at King's College London, I think he was a game changer for a lot of people. You couldn't dismiss him as an anti-vaxxer. He'd worked on the COVID wards. He had the antibodies. He was so calm and reasoned. He's clearly not ignorant, clearly not a bad person. We were clapping for him a couple of years ago. Um, for him, when he confronted Sajid Javid, I think that was the first time it was a wake-up call to an awful lot of people, maybe a lot of MPs as well, that, that this wasn't an anti-vax thing. This was about mandatory forced vaccination and threats and that that was a different issue entirely. So I agree with that, although what I think it did, I think what was the game changer with Steve, because there have been lots of us, as you know, who have been out there continuously about this, but I think the game changer with Steve is that the, the media decided that they would finally show it. So people hadn't seen this, Julia. People believed that the likes of me didn't exist. We were just mad people in the fringes. We went doctors working on the front line. I've worked in A&E through the pandemic. I too have seen it at first hand. But I think with Steve, the game changer was that suddenly it was on Sky and the BBC. And let's not um, kid ourselves. All of the media still did try to make him out as a lunatic. There was some pretty nasty stuff written out there. But that's history. Yeah. I think the important thing now is that we go forward. We convince the government today that not only do they need to make the announcement to scrap this, but they actually need to take away all of the laws underpinning it so that they can't then come back in six months' time and just yeah. quietly... And it. that's the worry, isn't it? We spoke to James Melville, also an anti lockdown campaign, talking about they need to repeal the coronavirus act. And of course, 29th of March, that's when that comes up for renewal. Uh, and I don't think that would get through at, at all anyway, outside an emergency situation. But also, I mean, the Public Health Act, actually, an awful lot of the restrictions we've had on our lives happened as a result of the long-standing you know, Public Health Act, 1984, ironically, um, rather than under the new coronavirus legislation. I think most of us are really quite shocked to discover how many of what we thought were our fundamental freedoms can be ripped away from us on, on a whim almost on based on you know some random stupid clearly wrong modeling from the likes of Neil Ferguson uh, at Imperial College um, without without even Parliament having a say. 
Well, so that's actually the very basis of the legal challenge that we, together, Declaration and NHS 100 and Workers of England have brought this week, that actually the Public Health Act is actually not the right tool to do this. It doesn't have the powers to make us take a medication against our will. And when you consider that, you have to accept that it's morally wrong that we're dividing up society by what medications they've chosen yeah. to have. And we need to get rid of this division, Julia, Julia. And we need actually now to look outside of the NHS NHS, give back those care workers who lost their jobs, their jobs back, because they did lose their jobs. Yep. But then also, there are other employers out there now who are mandating vaccines. Formula One comes to mind, and I, that is close to my heart, as you know. You know, there are employers out there that are doing the same. So when this falls today, it needs to fall across the board that employers should not be sticking their noses into the medical history of their staff. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. And again, very slippery slope on that front. Rene Hunderkamper, GP and medical writer, so appreciate you joining us. 